most brands do not price their products correctly. So in this video, I want to run through common mistakes within pricing, as well as provide you with a methodology that you can go and apply to how you're currently pricing your products. Most brands keystone price. And what keystone pricing is, is just taking the cost of your product, multiplying by two, and that's now your price. I strongly recommend against keystone pricing as it takes no associated variable costs at the unit level into consideration. And in fact, it doesn't take into consideration the cost that it might take you to acquire a customer for this particular product. It doesn't take into consideration price elasticity of demand. There are so many different factors that are just not taken into consideration when you're doing keystone pricing and you'll end up with a much lower contribution margin and gross margin at the end of the day than if you price correctly. And this is really the common issue that most brands see is that they look at their MOQ order from a factory and they go, okay, per unit, we're paying $6.12. So we're gonna price it about $12, meaning we have 50% margin. The fact of the matter is that they end up not having 50% margin because they didn't take into consideration any discounting that they might put on the product. They didn't take into consideration the cost of delivery. So the import tax into the country, they didn't take into consideration the free shipping that they're gonna slap onto that order, but now that's an additional variable cost. And all of these other allowances aren't factored into the actual pricing. Another common pricing methodology is IMU pricing. So initial markup. Now the equation here is sales price minus unit cost divided by unit cost times 100. And so people will change their pricing associated with their unit cost so that they could have a two, three, four X MMU. But once again, this is just an arbitrary number that doesn't have any consideration of the actual variable costs associated with the order and the unit alongside the cost to acquire a customer. So when you're pricing, you should consider number one, not the cost of goods sold, but the cost of delivery. So how much does it actually cost to land that product in the shipping country? Number two is you need to have a discount allowance. If you're going to be running discounts on this product, you need to build that into the pricing. You cannot use the tools without putting all of the structure in place for you to actually be able to use them. It's the exact same thing with free shipping thresholds. Brands are running for one, two, three years. They see some competitors running a free shipping threshold. They then put it straight on with absolutely no consideration of what that's doing to their variable costs, their gross margin and their pricing. When their competitors were and they're priced it into their structure. And so once again, you need to put the tools in place so that you can actually use them down the line. So having a discount allowance is really important. Now, how exactly to calculate this? We'll touch on that in a second. You need to have a shrink allowance. So shrink allowance is um, broken, uh, broken orders that then need to get returned, returns in general, any kind of faulty items, chargebacks, etc. And so you can calculate this by having a generic, we have 2% returns, 1% chargebacks, 3%. Okay, let's layer that into the pricing of our products because someone has to pay for that at the end of the day. And if you're not modeling that into your actual projected P&L, then it's going to appear there as a 3% direct loss that's not going to be factored into maybe your net target, which is 10%. And a 3% variance on a 10% net profit is enormous. If you miss net profits by 3% and you're targeting 10, you're in a very, very different position. And so factoring that into pricing is also important having a shipping cost allowance. So this is particularly if you're not going to be pricing shipping correctly as to how much it's actually costing you and or if you're gonna have free shipping thresholds in place. You need to be factoring this into the price. Now, what if someone doesn't put enough of quantity into their cart to actually unlock the free shipping? Well, fantastic, then we actually just made money on this allowance being in place. So we're actually making money on people not going and capturing discounts and capturing shipping costs, which is exactly the position that we want to be in. And then number five is that we want to know the actual profit per unit that we're targeting. And then there's actually a sixth component in here, which is your CAC. So I've put a waterfall graph here, which makes it really easy to visualize total price of $86.50. You can see cost of delivery and you can see all of these different um, variable costs associated in here. And so right away, the cost of delivery on this product is $25. So this is the cost for the product to land into the country. With uh, Keystone pricing, we would have just priced at $50 and moved on. You can see that if we were pricing at $50 here, we wouldn't have been considering a discount allowance, shrink allowance, shipping cost, 
And if we have a $20 CAC, so if it's costing us $20 in marketing expenses to actually sell this product, we would have been left with no profit at all. We would have been left with on paper $5 profit, but that's assuming that no discounts were taken and any abandoned cart flows where a discount code might've been sent. Uh, that assumes that there's no returns, no chargebacks, and there's no free shipping being claimed on any orders. And so this would have been an unprofitable product from the get-go. Now, if we used IMU pricing, we might have 3X, and so we might have priced at $75. But in that instance, once again, if we go up to 75, we can factor in these costs. We factor in CAC. Now, the actual profit that we're making at the end of the day will end up being closer to $20, which is going to take our contribution profit down to about 20%. Which means that if we have any OPEX at all, let's say OPEX is only 10%, then our net profit goes to 10%. And so we're not in a very strong position financially pricing this product at $75 either. So we start to find this sweet stop spot at about $86.50. That's where we can afford to pay $20 to acquire a customer. And based on all of our historical data within all of our marketing efforts, we know that $20 to acquire a customer for this product is reasonable. We know that we should have a shrink allowance of about $2.50 because on average, we have about a 3% shrink on revenue due to returns, chargebacks, etc. Um, we know that shipping costs, we're likely going to incur a slight loss here because on average, 30% of users take the free shipping threshold. On average, when we have a free shipping threshold being taken, we take a $12 loss, $12 times by 30%, about $4. So we can build that into the model. Um, and then ultimately with these figures in place, we then get to calculate the actual contribution profit. And this gives us a direct idea of if we hit all of these numbers, if we price as we are, and we have a $20 CAC and all of our discount allowance, shrink allowance and shipping costs stay stable, which is a very reasonable assumption to make, we will be sitting at a daily contribution profit of 35%. That then allows us to know exactly if we have a net target we know exactly how we can hit that net target based on OPEX figures. So we might have to keep our OPEX as a proportion of revenue at 15%, and that allows us 35% minus 15% equals 20% net profit. And so this way of pricing not only allows us to take into consideration all of these variable costs that normally aren't considered and drive brands into not being profitable, but it allows us to understand exactly what our contribution profit is going to be. And then as a consequence, what our OPEX needs to sit at as a proportion of total revenue to hit our profitability goals. If you'd like access to this sheet where you can plug in your numbers, it outputs the graph and it outputs a contribution profit. Let me know. Uh, we can make sure to send that through to you if you get in contact with us.